I'm oh, chat, chat, yes. Okay, I am going to um, just bring you over to uh, sharing my screen. And which one do I want to be on? Because I have like 10 of them. Ah, there we go. We'll go here. Uh, and this is not it. Good morning, Can you see this, folks? This one? And we're doing a prayer here at, at St. Anne. So we're going to just listen. local here are over so i appreciate your patience while that went on i couldn't have talked over it so um i just want to make sure i am sharing the right screen there we go sure um so again uh, in case you didn't hear uh, the announcements again you have school today and tomorrow and then uh, good friday which is the 15th you have no school and you have holidays until the 24th and school begin begins on the 24th make sure you mark that up. So uh, welcome to Social 10-1. Um, everything is in the course here that I'm just going to go through a quick overview of the course so you know where things are, where they're laid out. And, and certainly uh, I'm open to if there's an issue, you have trouble finding things or other things. Uh, feedback is always uh, greatly appreciated. I am, of course, still I mean as well. They call it a teaching practice for a reason. Try to get better all the time. Um, so this is where all the course updates are going to be. You can see that uh, everything here is always linked in the front in the new sections. And uh, this is where everything is. The other thing that you should make sure that you have done, and I've put this as a, I think, um, a notice out 
maybe it was in this one, maybe it wasn't. Um, oh, in your email, in your email, to make sure you've connected your Google Docs. If yours doesn't look like this, <clears throat> and it says authorize, or your widget, you can't see the widget, um, you know, collapse it, or you know, if it's collapsed, <coughs> excuse me, anything related to this, um, oops. Um, uh, if you want to be able to Dropbox Google Docs, you have to authorize Google to talk to Brightspace and they then will integrate. Uh, if you don't share things and don't email uh, documents to me, Dropbox is the core spot where everything is for me. Uh, I have a number of students in this class and other students in the other, and it, it just gets confusing on my end. And I don't want to miss your work for whatever reason. You sent me something and say, hey, email that to you. Uh, how come I don't have a mark? If it's not in the Dropbox, I can't mark it. So please get in the habit. If you don't know how to do it, I sent an email yesterday um, to how to Dropbox, how to connect your Google to your G12. Okay. Um, grades, of course, all your grades are going to be listed in here, which is standard for, for uh, D2L, even if you're in a Google Classroom. So everything is going to be, there's all our assignments. Uh, your drop boxes for different things are all listed here as well. And uh, it tells you what they are. Content for the course, of course, is here. And the content I've, I've tried to lay out, we only have uh, four modules. It's quite uh, four units. And then of course, written assignments and, and some projects. So your page will look like slightly different because I have other things in mind that are hidden from you. But the course information, uh, the course outline itself, I'm gonna go through it briefly, but ultimately you are in a 10-1. So the 10-1 stream, if you've never been told this, is ultimately you are gearing yourself towards post-secondary of some sort, whether it's university, college, and that you are pushing yourself to be the, the best academic student that you can be. And that, um, and ultimately, you may not remember all the details of this course or grade 11 or grade 12, but what we want you to be able to do is become good citizens. That means be able to think, organize your thoughts and express yourself in a, in a systematic structured way based upon uh, research and ideas so that you are a learned, educated citizen. <laughs> and ultimately your writing skills and reading skills go all, all subjects that you need to do. Uh, so we certainly focus on, on the analysis of, of, of material and expressing yourself in a way that makes sense in a logical way. So again, the topic we're looking at is globalization. Next year is, is nationalism and then grade uh, 12 is sort of like a rehash of grade nine where it's politics and economics, a lot more detail. So we're going to look at the impacts of globalization. Has it has it, um, it locally, uh, federally, as well as internationally? And you're going to see that we uh, are living in a, really in a mini in a fantastic time. Just going to move this to the side. Um, ultimately, we are interconnected and interdependent, and you can see that as with things that are going on in the world. That one thing that happens in another part of the world. Of course, Ukraine is in the front page of the news, and that has ripple effects on the world. And uh, there's some positive things of our globalization, and there's some challenges, and we're going to look at both. So to what extent should we embrace? And again, in grade in high school, in 10-1, and 10-2, 20-1, 30-1, it's to what extent is what we want to do. To what extent are, do you believe or should we engage in certain things? And um, I just want to make sure. Sorry, I just want to make sure there wasn't a chat going on. I try to usually keep that open. Um, to what extent should we embrace these ideas? And some people love uh, social studies, because uh, it, you can have a variety of opinions. Some people hate it. They, they're more math oriented. I want to know that two and two is four. And that's always correct. Uh, whereas in social studies and in English, 
you have series of gray. There's no black and white world. It doesn't exist. Uh, my opinion is different than your opinion. Are they both valid? Absolutely. And so we want to understand that uh, to what extent should we embrace certain ideas? To what extent do we think these things are important and that we should uh, deal with them or have them as part of our life? And your understanding of the world is going to change dramatically uh, from your age to you know when you get older to, to my age. Uh, the things I valued when I was your age are very different in some ways than the uh, things that I value now or I think are important. So we look at um, identity is the first thing we look at, then we're gonna look at historical globalization, and then we look at how uh, sustainability, um, and then of course, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna respond? Okay, if you wanna look at the curriculum, there it is. Units are divided up each one, and then of course we have a final exam. So expectations again, I participate, ask questions. Um, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try my very best to be the best teacher you can have. Um, this is a, I was literally just asked to do this just a few days ago. So I'm still working with the course and I'm trying to make it better. As I said, this is a teaching practice and I hope to be better. Again, don't copy other people's work. Don't copy stuff off the web and paste it in. Uh, I've taught, I've taught for 29 years. So I certainly know a grade 10 writing when I see grade 10. If you don't know how to do something, ask for help. And uh, so don't, don't do that. It just ends up bad. And it just, it's not a bad way. It's a bad way to set, set a tone for our relationship. Uh, if you're going to be absent, make sure you uh, touch base. Everything is going to be posted within the front edge of the news, uh, of course. So if you miss things, that's what we uh, guidelines for reassessment. If there is there is opportunity for a reassessment, but there is a process to do that. And, uh, if it's not with up in the course, then I'll make sure it's up there. But it's not just here to redo the test. We want to make sure that you improve your understanding. So it's not just taking another test again. It's like okay, you didn't understand these concepts and these ideas. Let's go over it and uh, make sure that you understand it so that you improve. Uh, that's the goal of reassessment. Um, okay. So that's the course outline. Any questions so far? Okay. Where my chat went? As you can see, I'm. I haven't been online for, for a, a while. Um, and so I appreciate your uh, patience as I click buttons and hope they do the right thing. Um, okay. Um, I don't see a chat. Am I missing a chat? Oh, there it is. This one's chat. Okay, no chat. I I've, I've, I've found my screen. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm going to assume everyone can hear what I've said. Anyways, um, just going to see if I can. Okay, I appreciate you, my, you patient with my ramblings. Okay, so we are going to start. Um, and let's go through the, the structure of this first unit. So we have a number of PowerPoints, uh, cover the key concepts and ideas. Uh, then we have um, activities that um, some people like to take notes. So I've created this for the first unit. And you can sort of fill in the blank and it's a way to people follow along and take notes. Some people like that in the past. I've done that. It's a bit of a close kind of thing where you fill in some blanks. I have, uh, this is a word version and I link to a Google doc if that works better for you. Uh, the there is this activity that is a Dropbox activity, and it has a variety of links that certainly after I introduce some topics, I'm gonna to give you some class time to work on this because ultimately it is a Dropbox activity. And uh, it has some reading, it has some videos that we're looking at, and uh, a number of, a couple activities. And 
the, uh, as I said, this is a Dropbox activity. Um, but we're gonna do some PowerPoints today that will lead you into helping you understand this. And then we will uh, move forward tomorrow. It's, we'll have lots of time to get things done, but uh, again, our, our second topic is, is forces of globalization. And then we get into the other uh, aspects of it. So everything is here within a PowerPoints and hopefully it is making sense to you so far. Make sure there's no chats, no chats. Okay. So let's look at lesson one, defining globalization. And again, you can open this up and follow along how you organize open your three different Move this to the side for me. And Ultimately, we understand that how does globalization, it's something that is occurring all around us and we just don't even think about it. It's like coming into a house, turning on the light and like we don't think about the whole process of how did that electricity come to my house and the light bulb turns on. It's just, it, it, it's now imbued within every aspect of, of our life. And uh, so here's the, here's some definitions of, of globalization. And then these are just two. You can search globalization defined, define globalization on the web, and you'll find lots. But ultimately, it's connectedness and interconnectedness. And, um, and we see this in so many ways. I mean, uh, you're dealing with social media. You can have a, uh, uh, you can open up a uh, YouTube account and you can do whatever you're doing with that and you can have followers from all over the world and you can influence them and they can influence you. You can open a discord and you can talk about all kinds of different things. You wanna use a sub stack, all these different things that you can use to communicate and interconnect. So that's just one way. But of course, if you looked at even just the label on your shirt, where is it made? Um, where's your car made? Where is, uh, you know, the, the different things, everything we do is not, Canada doesn't produce things, nor does the United States, you know, wholly within itself. Usually it needs parts and other things from around the world. Um, so a second definition, increasing international divisions of labor and the accompanying integration of national economies through trade, goods, services, cross-border and financial flows, the movement of money, and you're seeing uh, some impacts of, of printing of money and the movement of money um, now. But the idea is that the integration of national economies at every level, economically, through uh, cultural exchanges, through corporations, through uh, people traveling and working in different parts of the world, and as it says here, in particular, transportation and communication. So we're gonna certainly look at, you know, transportation, we've had logistics issues. I don't know if your, your parents are talking about, uh, you know, there's, they can't get certain things. Maybe they work for the company or some company or uh, they can't get supplies. They, there's a shortage. And so we're seeing a challenge with uh, logistics going on right now around the world of, of people and corporations not able to get things. For example, microchips for cars, some of the plastics for automobiles. And that's causing uh, where people can't get a vehicle. And so the used car and used vehicle market is, is crazy. Uh, I have a friend that drove a truck for a year. It's a corporate truck, put 90,000 K on it in a year. He tells you how much he drives. And he sold it for what he paid for it a year later. I mean, just because people can't get a truck they're willing to pay whatever. So there's some positive sides where we're seeing some challenges with, um, of course, this interconnectedness. So again, a couple other definitions. And this term supranational corporation. So supranational corporation is ultimately one that is in multiple countries, but is also a dominant player. 
Can anyone think of a supranational corporation where they are the dominant player in, in an industry or in the world? Can anyone think of something? Do I have to unmute you? Okay, fair enough. So a supranational corporation would be something that dominates the field. So Google, for example, dominates the online uh, search and information world. Um, another one would be Microsoft. Those are um, Those are uh, supranational corporations. There are multiple corporations that dominate a field. Okay, so historical stage of acceleration of expansion of capitalism, like it has in the Industrial Revolution, which you covered a little bit last year. Um, there's a technological revolution, as well as you see, in a, as it says, a recombination of economic and social forces. And the idea ultimately behind this, when you see supranational corporations and you see recombination of economic and social forces, you see corporations and people, super wealthy people have tremendous amount of power and influence around the world. Um, the ability to influence nations. So corporations have the ability to negotiate great tax deals where they're not, and they're not gonna be taxes on, uh, they're not gonna pay taxes on a factory they set up, or they're gonna get a whole bunch of concessions to build it. And um, yeah, very good. Yes, McDonald's would be. Um, <clears throat> so you're seeing the, the power of corporations to influence state decisions and the, and the idea that corporations can move quickly. They're not, um, they're not loyal to a nation. They're not loyal to anything. They're loyal to their, their, their stockholders and they are going to do whatever it takes to make the most money for their stockholders. And that has led to some very positive things and that's led to some great challenges for us. But the power of corporations to move and swerve is much quicker than nation states. We Nation states follow the rule of law. They have to pass legislation. It's slow and arduous and corporations can make a decision today that that by next month they have a totally different focus and pivot their uh, activities either out of a country or to a new direction and that's very hard to do as a nation the only thing that is very similar to that would be uh, dictators dictatorships like uh, basically the communist party in china that can mobilize uh, forces very quickly because they are unelected leaders. So when we look at this time, globalization, as it says here, is a complicated issue with many different possible perspectives. And the idea is multiple perspectives. And we certainly have a perspective from the West as a Western Western world, and in Canada West, the Western world is very different than other places in the world where we just make the assumption that certain things are going to take place and that we live in a democracy and that we have clean running water and we have economic opportunities. And there's lots of places around the world that do not have those things yet. And uh, their perspective of globalization is very different. You may not know this right now that there's huge um, protests in Chile and Peru because of inflation. Inflation is skyrocketing. I just saw yesterday that inflation in the United States went up 8% last month alone, 8% per month. So if you average that out for the next 12 months, 
we're at 100% inflation. Um, so we have some ability to uh, manage that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes and no, not all the time, but yes. Certainly now this is uh, related to, uh, to some degree to to some degree with the inflation prices. Uh, in Canada, we have some ability to um, deal with inflation. Uh, we have a middle class with some disposable income and in, uh, reasonable income coming in every month. Whereas if you're an impoverished country, if the price of fuel goes up 20 cents, that changes their life. Or the price of food goes up 30%, that changes their life. Um, whereas, you know, maybe, maybe we're not eating steak, we're eating, you know, pork chops or chicken instead. We're still eating good protein. We're still eating access to food where many third world countries, um, it's devastating for them. Hence the protests. Okay, so common perspectives on globalization. Hyperglobalists, they believe that, uh, that everything is positive. There's no negatives. And you can certainly see the world through that. We live in the longest period of recorded world peace. There are skirmishes and there are conflicts, and certainly those occurred since World War II. In recorded history, since World War II till now, we have not had a world war where the entire globe or huge aspects of the world and nations were at war. Um, that's a very positive thing. My grandparents uh, were born, and you know, at the end of World War One, and uh, the impacts of that, and they went through. Uh, they they fought in World War Two, so they in their lifetime they had two wars. My parents' lifetime, no wars. My lifetime, no wars. Knock on wood that nothing does occur. So that's a very positive side. The fact that we can get tropical fruit in January, February, and March. When I was growing up, it was rare. I mean, you'd get an orange maybe if you're lucky. It was pears and apples, things could be stored. Uh, you can get tropical fruit. Just walk down to the store today now. Um, we have very inexpensive goods. I mean, you walk into the dollar store, or Walmart, or any big box store, and you can get items that, that I don't even know how they get them to the dollar store for buck 25, it boggles my mind. Um, how they can produce that, they make money, they ship it, the shipping company makes money, they distribute it at Dollarama, they make money, and it's $1.25. How they do it. Um, economies of scale. So globalists admits that um, globalization causes some serious problems, but the main overall globalization some advantages and disadvantages. And certainly, I think that if you talk to many Canadians, this would probably be where many of us are, that there are some challenges. And if we look around the world, um, there's some problems and there's some problems here. But generally, I think we've seen some overall positive things. But again, this is where you, you're going to form your opinion at the end of this course. I got another chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, and that's the benefit, uh, Alex, is that you know, you're, you're gonna, it's great to have an opinion on that and hopefully uh, it, it flew this course, it strengthens that to some degree. So and alter globalists believe the globalism occurs does more harm than good, but they don't wanna stop it because they can see there's some potential good for it. For example, Starbucks, you know, here it is a big conglomerate, you buy coffee beans from around the world, it's a multinational corporation, but, an ultra globalist would say, listen, we're going to, countries, companies like Starbucks buys ethical coffee. So what it means is that the customer, you and I, we pay $5 for a cup of coffee. In the process, Starbucks makes money, but they pay the farmers that grow their beans more money. They help them with their crop production. They help them with sustainable practices. Uh, they also pay them more for their beans which means that they live a better life, they can send their kids to school, and you have a betterment of society and the world through that process. So it's you know, someone that, that uses globalization to make an impact in the third world or a developing world or other places in the world that 
make it a better place for everybody. It doesn't have to be where just North America gets cheap coffee and we don't care that the beans are, you know, are, are picked basically by children and whatever, I don't care. Alter globalists believe that they can make changes through the corporation and uh, through globalization. So our rejectionist believes that all forms of globalization are negative and they believe that there should be used localization. And you can certainly see there is a movement towards this in some ways. Um, the, uh, what is it, the 100, eating within, eating food that is produced within 100 kilometers of your house <clears throat> or your city, there's a whole movement towards that. So that you're eating local food and you see that uh, on restaurants or in grocery stores, local food, locally produced, it's in a sense a rejection of uh, globalization for their food or other things. Uh, the big process of um, my daughter's big into thrifting, you know, recycling, uh, reusing, um, not, uh, not just buying new and flashy and then when you're done with it, throwing it away. To, in a sense, they want to reverse globalization. They see negatives. Okay, any questions so far? So defining identity, personal identity, and collective identity. So we're gonna look at within globalization and within uh, all social studies through high school, you're gonna see that there's individuals and collectivism. So we're gonna briefly touch on this idea. And you would have touched a little bit last year uh, on your, your economic systems. So personal identity is the idea is that I, it's unique to you and it's expressed how the music you listen to, the clothes you wear, uh, the things you think, uh, and the people you hang out with. And it's what makes you unique. And we are all in a sense, a uh, unique aspects, even if you're, you know, uh, you know, if you're a skater, you know, a skateboarder and certain people wear certain clothes as a skateboarder, but you're gonna wear your slightly different. So you can still be unique within that group. So you have individualism and collectivism. So individual aspects as well as you have ethnic background, language spoken, these things are gonna make you unique. And certainly, as I said, you can be part of a group, you know, we're, we're, we're Catholics, Roman Catholics, um, but your perspective and your understanding of your relationship with God and the church can be very different than someone else's. And uh, that's the idea of a personal identity and that's gonna change over time. And uh, the things that you like, people you, uh, your role models and those kind of things. And I know yesterday I sent out a, a Padlet link to introduce yourself and I'll certainly look at that link. Sends to have a little better understanding of, of uh, who you are and uh, things that are important to you. The, now collective identity is where we have shared values. And so some people, um, so the groups that you're in, and the things that you share within that. So for example, I'll go back to individual identity, your religion, your interpretation of religion, your relationship with the church can be unique, but it is a group. When you belong to a religion, it is a group, it's a collective. And certainly there is gonna be some shared values and some shared beliefs within that. You know, the liturgy, if you go to a liturgy anywhere in the world, the liturgy is going to be very similar to the liturgy that you have or have done at your school if you've done one in the last little while uh, with the sacraments. Uh, sacraments are going to be the same uh, wherever you go in the world, but how you interpret and your relationships is individual within that group. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So some common collectives, certainly within Canada, you know, we, we're going to, you look at this next year is what, what makes us kind of unique because we're very culturally diverse and uh, diverse. Maybe, maybe it's our language and maybe it's our uh, love of hockey routine. Uh, it's always a great question when we look at what makes Canada unique. Um, again, some collective groups that we can all belong to. If you belong to a sports club or you work somewhere, of course, you're in a collective here uh, in a group at our school. So, um, Different identities, we have, uh, again, Louis Riel is Métis, and people see him as part of a group. You have the Vice President Kamala Harris, who is East Indian, uh, 
Caribbean background and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. In case you didn't know about Dwayne The Rock Johnson, his last year of football was with the Calgary Stampeders. And uh, if you ever read, he had put a biography out early on and he said the lowest point in his life was being cut for the, from the Calgary Stampeders. He injured his leg. And he went back home, his family's in Miami. And uh, he uh, said the lowest point in his life was being cut by Stampeders. Uh, really, I mean, Calgary, Canadian football is, is, uh, is a sort of bush league. Not a negative, I'm just saying it's not, pinnacle of NFL or even good college football. Uh, but from there, he uh, rebuilt himself. He got into the wrestling and now, of course, that's many other ways. He played American football. I'm not sure. I, he, he injured his leg. He was University of Miami hurricane guy. Um, and his last year, he injured his leg. And I don't think he made an NFL team. I think he might have made a practice squad and made some money that way, but got cut. I don't know all the details of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but he certainly has been successful. Hey, another chat, here we go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but he was a big, he was a, a big star in uh, uh, in college football, <clears throat> and of course became successful. Okay, any questions on this first PowerPoint? You can tell I'm not used to talking. <laughs> My throat. Mm. Again, introducing you to the concepts and ideas. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes to work on this. Um, we have some, these links I sure hope work. Let me know if these links do not work. These should all be live links. If they are not, then I will resubmit it within this course. Um, so there's a couple PowerPoints, or not PowerPoints, videos, and Crash Course, I'll tell you, <laughs> there's, a, you know, there's a great example of uh, globalization. Uh, these people are out of the United States, but they create videos that people watch from all over the world. And they started with just a couple people uh, that started this channel, and they make millions. You can search what uh, different YouTube channels make. A friend of mine, uh, he's younger, he, I, I know his dad, and anyway, he's more friends with his dad. But, son but he has a youtube channel he has about forty thousand subscribers and he makes about five thousand dollars a month from what he does he just films backcountry uh, so good question uh gabriel um i'll come back to you. anyways you too can start a YouTube channel. so uh, what you're gonna have to do is download this um download this activity so someone's asking what do I do? So you download it and you open it. And you're going to go through it. Oh, it don't work. Okay. So, oh, yes, it does. Okay. So if you write, oh, it wants to work. There it is. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure they worked. I'll stop that. Okay. Oops. Where am I? Where am I? Oops. Okay. So once you've downloaded it, um, you have to watch the three different videos and then read the excerpt from the article below. This is highly positive perspective of the spread of McDonald's. Okay, so they want you to, sorry, I want you to highlight the positive aspects of McDonald's and the negative aspects of McDonald's being um, spread around the world. Uh -oh, two chats. Oh, how do I even highlight it? Well, once you download it, you can just highlight it with a highlighter. Does that make sense? Um, and, and the, okay, good. Hopefully that made sense. Um, 
again, it's your opinion. We're going to come back to it and we're going to look at, okay, what are some things that we saw that are positive? What are some th negative things? That are, so we'll make sure we come back and take a look at it. Um, then we have uh, this little, I think this article is the same one. Okay, that might be a separate one. Hmm. And that's pokey slope. Anyways, um, it is slow. There it is. It's not going to Google Docs. Um, no, so you don't need to use Google Docs. So I'm going to show you again. If you go to this, even if you don't have Word, if you don't have Word, this will still download to Word. You just download it. If you hit download, it'll automatically go into Word, even if you don't have Word. And if there's still some technical issues, then I will, uh, while you're working on this, I will publish a uh, Google Doc for you. But even if you don't have Word, this will work as Word. I don't, I don't have that option. No. Really? Gabriel. Um, you don't, there's, you don't have three buttons in the side? Um, okay. Strange. Okay. Um, well, then I will, uh, pause the video and I will um, upload a Google Doc. That's gonna take a few minutes, so just be patient with me. Let me just go through the rest of the, the document for those people that are not having technical issues. Um, and that's, uh, that's good to know that you're having issues. Um, personal identity refers to who you are as unique individuals. There's no one else exactly like you. So this is activity two. Um, so you want to look at how your identity is, is, is influenced by globalization. This is your, in a sense, reflection, in a sense, your understanding uh, a little bit of the material. Uh, you can input PDF to Google Drive. Right click on oh, and select open of Google Docs. Oh, aren't you kind, Benjamin? Um, I made it into Google Docs. See, I just learned something new. <laughs> Uh, yes, you're going to do all the activities, Andrew, uh, but you, you're going to have some time for it. So, and, and we're going to come back to it and make sure that you've got the right stuff for activity one, and then activity two, and then activity three. Like ultimately, you should get a very good mark on this because we're going to come back and make sure you have the information. But the idea behind this is that by doing the activity, we then double check your work to make sure that you you have an understanding and then you upload it, you should get a very good mark on this. The idea is that if you're not a great writer or don't do great on tests, this is a way to, in a sense, we're gonna fluff up your mark to make sure you still understand the material in a different way. You're expressing it in a different way. Not everyone is a great writer and we're working on that process and not everyone's a great test taker. And so this way, by doing these activities and uploading them, because it is an assignment and there's a Dropbox, uh, the idea is to balance out your demonstration of your learning and understanding the material. Does that make sense? Uh, and thank you for, and Benjamin, thank you so much. Oh, look at that. Uh, here it is. So was, oh my gosh, Tristan, you're awesome. I really appreciate you uh, helping people out. So in case you didn't see in the chat, if you, um, Tristan has made it into a Google Doc and has shared that for you. Make sure you make your own copy for that. Wow, Tristan, what a, what a fine, what a great help you are. Thank you so much. I, man, I'm so touched by this class already helping each other. And I really uh, uh, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm just bring tears to my eyes when people help each other. I like that. It's just fantastic. Just, oh, man. Okay. Um, so five characters, personal identity list below. We record each character to choose in the table below and describe how this character is linked to globalization. So ethnic background. So let me go through this again because we're distracted. So activity two, 
Personal identity first, who you are as a unique individual. There is no one else exactly like you anywhere else in the world. You are express, we all express our identity in different ways and we all have different aspects of our identity. Now that you have learned about globalization, we're learning about it. Um, consider how your identity is influenced by globalization. Influenced by globalization. So choose five characteristics. Choose five of these. Don't do them all, just choose five. Of the personal identity from the list below, record each characteristic chosen in the table below and describe how this character is linked to globalization. And so characteristic chosen, let's say um, favorite foods. One of my favorite foods is a hamburger. No, oh, that's a little pizza. I like pizza too. So where did pizza come from? How is it because you're linked to globalization? Well, it, it, you know, it's from this country. It's uh, when you have my favorite pizza is Hawaiian. That's a Canadian thing. Um, people around the world, some people love it, some people hate it. And so how is the characterization linked to globalization? You can put your opinion in there. Um, you can also copy and paste how is clothing connected to globalization and your identity. Uh, maybe you're into the K-pop stuff, which I just learned about. And you're like, you know, I'm going to wear a nice suit or I'm going to wear a nice shirt or I'm going to learn a little bit of um, uh, Korean. And uh, so you can practice those. That's how it's part of your identity. Um, you're going to read page 21 to 22. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. And if you note here, there is a project. If you go into content, it's listed below. We use this for make sure identity globalization project. So this it gives you an understanding of the material. It gives you a way to express yourself in a way that is different than testing and um, uh, written assignments. And so you do have a project ultimately as well. So make sure this is why. Screen is not moving for me. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure what that means, but hopefully you can hear me. Um, again, this is going to be used for a future project. So the way it's designed is to have a variety of information, way to present yourself in different ways. Um, the textbook is located within um, context, in, in, within content. And it's if you scroll down. Oh, okay. Um, so I want to make sure you scroll down. The textbook is at the very bottom for you. It's slightly different because my I have a variety of different things. Uh, here we go. Uh, your textbook is at the very bottom. Yours, uh, you don't have all these things. These are my stuff. So textbook is here. And you just have to, I just have the first two chapters unleashed for you. Um, so let's go back to the assignment. Context, the circumstances surrounding that form, setting events, statements, ideas. Yeah, uh, you're gonna do activity one and two, yeah. Uh, but I'm going to go through all three just because some people want to work ahead and that's the benefit of this. Uh, but we're going to work on one and two. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it's all good, Gabriel. Um, okay, you're going to read these pages and then you're going to answer a couple of questions from it. Activity three, you're going to read a couple of pages and you're going to write about uh, some collective identity. And activity four, you're gonna read a couple of pages, answer a couple of questions. And I do have an extension of learning. If you're into, you know, hey, I wanna know a little bit more about this and these things, I do have these extensive activities. Uh, when is the assignment due? That's a great question. Um, so certainly today, I would like you to be able to finish activity one, because I'd like to take it up to make sure that you have the right information. Um, again, this whole thing is going to be submitted as one document, activity one, two, three, and four. It's going to be submitted as one document. So uh, if you go back to the, if we go back to the drop boxes, there is just one, um, activity one, defining globalization, like, okay. There is another activity like this later on. There's two more for this first unit. 
but all these activities, um, activity one, two, three, and four is one document and you'll submit it as one document. But again, we're gonna go through it and make sure you have the right information. So I want you to watch the three videos and then you're gonna do activity one, which is just highlighting the positive and negatives in your opinion. And then uh, we're gonna come back, what time is it? 10, so that I sh you should be able to get them. Each video I believe is, is 10 minutes, this is 10 minutes, and this is a quick little thing. So 20, so 30. So let's come back at 1040-ish because the, uh, yeah, 1045 and 1040-ish and in that range. Oops. Yes. No, just one is due today. And it's not due in a sense. We're going to take it up. Uh, it's, I'll give you a date. I'll put a date of when one, two, three, and four are due. How's that? But today, we're just going to do, I'm going to give you class time to do, watch, uh, watch the two videos and use this, look at this, and then read this, and then highlight it. That's what we're going to do for the next 45 minutes. So I'm gonna stay online. I'm gonna have my camera off and my mic off, but I will respond to questions and, uh, and give you uh, that opportunity to work. Again, you're gonna access these three resources. Then you're gonna read this short article, highlight the things that are positive in green and, and negative in yellow. Again, you can have a different opinion from someone else. And that's what we're doing for the next 45 minutes. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions before I uh, send you off to do some work? Okay, and I will uh, come back in 45 minutes. We'll do a checkup to make sure that we've done activity one and that we are all on the same page in the sense that we've got it completed. And then we'll look at activity two together okay okay i'm gonna pause this recording stop sharing this hey folks welcome back welcome to our first little uh you know glitchy glitch kind of stuff so um i'm gonna go back to sharing our uh, our screen here and so welcome back and again we're all figuring stuff out here and that's okay to have some challenges so and it's better for me like i said uh, if, if people are having everybody's technical access to technology is different uh and so i'm going to try my best to be um uh, to be able to serve everybody or the most people i can um so i put up in uh in the, in d12s i emailed out to everybody that uh where is it? that's not it that's not it that's not it <laughs> uh that's not it either <laughs> okay where did it go um i thought i emailed it i thought i put this up in the course um that's so weird um uh, maybe i i'm having a i thought i put it there that's it's the second one oh, that's a powerpoint oh geez um, I thought I thought I put, anyways, I thought I put it up here in, in as a Google Doc. Now I'm oh no, did it was it there? Like can someone help me out? Did they see it? Do you see it? Oh gosh. Um
Oh, gosh. I don't know why I'm suddenly having. Yeah, so I've got that there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to create new web link. I thought I did this already. Unit one, lesson one, activity guide. Yes, see, I already did this. Save. <clears throat> okay, I don't know why it wasn't there, but uh, gosh. Here you get to see me as I create the course. It, but, but, that wasn't there a minute ago. <laughs> Okay, the gremlins are playing with my brain. Uh, I'm just going to hide that one. Okay, so I put it there as a Google Doc. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful everybody had access to that and had some issues. And if you're not done, that's okay. We had some technical issues and I'm, you know, uh, you're having, that's the, that's the benefits of the first day. Now, again, I'm not collecting this right now. You're going to do all of these activities one, two, three, and four. This is one whole document that you're gonna submit at the end. Now, I'm gonna show you a little thing that if you're going to Dropbox this, okay? And you go to Dropbox it and you click in this. <clears throat> oh, I have to do as a student, sorry. View as a student. Dropbox. I go here. Add a file. If you do not see Google Drive here, it's because you have not connected Google to your D2L. And I sent you a video in the email yesterday. Please look at that. Um, if you only see the first three, it's because you have not connected Google Drive to your uh, Dropbox. And so it's an easy, literally a 30 second connection. It, it's real simple. You just, but you got to watch that video. Um, what you do have to do, and I'll show you here in case you haven't done it. Uh, you're going to scroll down. If this doesn't, if you can't see this widget, right, expand it. And it should look like this. If it says authorize or anything else, then just click through and just connect your uh, Google Drive to your D2L. It's that simple. And then again, don't email me assignments. <laughs> that's I get I get I get hundreds of emails and I don't want to see your work get lost in the process a Google Doc is easily enough to drive uh, drop it into the Dropbox and then um, then they're all in one spot and then I guarantee that things get marked for you absolutely guarantee you so uh, again, if you're having any problems, drop boxes, items, please ask for help. Okay, so we are, of course, on this document. So the first one, what is globalization? Again, hopefully you had no uh, straightforward video on that one. It was uh, just different interpretation. Gonna go through it all. I just want to make sure that if you had any questions on this first video, an and we got to listen to the ads because this is why people make money. So this one's pretty good. It, it goes through the different aspects of globalization. Certainly, the one of the key things is this containerization. We're going to go to a more deal. The ability to transport goods around the world um, in very short periods of time is one of the key things to make uh, inexpensive, uh, why we can make goods inexpensive. That's why you can get that $1.25 set of gardening gloves at the dollar store. Boggles my mind how they can do that or whatever it is. <clears throat> and this video really covers that really well. It's the cost of containerization and the little graph that they have right here. It's dropped 65%. It's dropped even more recently because this video is a few years old. However, 
recently with logistics issues and uh, supply chain issues, containerization costs have gone up. But we have a couple issues with that. And the, one of the issues is, of course, is we have choke points. So um, all these goods coming in, you know, out of China, and India, Bangladesh, leaving our country elsewhere, there's only so many ports that things can come into and out of. And if they're coming, let's say, from India or China, they're going to come into a West Coast port. Vancouver, Seattle, the big one is LA. And then they have issues there that uh, California has put restrictions on how old the trucks can be that are going to go pick up the goods. So if you have a truck that's 10 years old, they're not letting you into the port. Uh, and so that's caused huge problems. This is why one reason why we can't get some goods because they restricted because of that uh, standard. Um, the other issues is are their strikes. And it's just the volume of goods coming into the country uh, that you were having logistics issues. Um, but the containerization is a huge change in, um, in, in the transportation. The other choke points are the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal. They shortcut transportation around the world. I don't know if you know this, but uh, China is building another Panama Canal in a sense, right next to the one or close to the one that already exists. The Panama Canal that was built presently, it was built in 1915, first by the French and then the British took it over. Uh, Americans ultimately ran it for a long period of time, but the port entrances are controlled by China. Um, they're building a new one. So the reason why they're building a new one is the first one was built for 1915, very narrow ships because ships were much narrower. Now they're these massive ships. And so China actually has these massive ships ready to go. They're massive wide container ships <clears throat> um, that are, they're gonna go through this new uh, Suez Canal that they're building to be much bigger and have a greater capacity. Uh, so interesting things there. The other issue here is talking about this concept of open markets. And we talked about that briefly in that PowerPoint. This is the idea of free flow of goods and services. So that's banking, financing, marketing. So the idea is that we can market things. We don't produce cheap plastic things in this country anymore because the labor costs, everything else costs are too high. We can't produce them, cheap plastic toys. This is why they go to third world countries where labor costs are next to nothing. Um, but what we'll do is we'll do the financing for that corporation. We'll do the marketing for that company. We'll do the uh, distribution systems and logistic. Calgary is a huge logistics center. It's a great career. If you're interested, SAIT has a great program for logistics. Um, uh, the open markets, the idea of free flow of things, goods and ideas. You can have money that's in, you know, parked in Peru and it's now uh, being used to produce uh, something in another country that's gonna be shipped to a third country, this idea of free flow of goods, open markets. So what occurred before 1991 is the end of the Soviet Union. And you do cover this in grade 12 a lot more. <clears throat> but the idea is that there used to be two worlds in a sense, there was a free market democracy and there was the communist run and in a sense the, the bloc run by the Soviet Union. Those things fell apart. Soviet Union fell apart in 91, 92. And from that, we found now have a unipolar globalized world where there's no restrictions in a sense uh, in many ways uh, between uh, goods and uh, countries. Uh, what's the other? So again, the development of, of multinational corporations. We talked the fact that um, this little stat here, very few, and today, in fact, the number is much bigger. Uh, there's about 100,000 multinational corporations. The idea is that they produce goods in multiple countries. <coughs> and this has expanded dramatically um, in, um, in the, since, uh, since 91. The other one is these non-governmental organizations, these supranational organizations that, um, that have influence, can influence nations but are not national based in the sense that they're not projection of power of a nation anymore. It's projection of power of a people with an agenda. So you can have uh, environmental groups, you can have um, manufacturing groups, you can have a variety of different groups that have tremendous power, 
to influence policy decisions on the nation, nation state. And so this whole concept is, you know, looking forward, some people have said, and uh, our present prime minister is famous for saying that he's going to make Canada the first post nation entity that, that being a nation doesn't matter anymore because corporations and these uh, outside organizations, the G20, the United Nations, these NGOs, they do a much, in his opinion, much better job at running the nation. Uh, and so that's very controversial because we're, of course, we're Canada. You want to stay that way. Many people want to stay that way. Um, the other one is uh, the globalization of, uh, where is it? Where is that little screenshot? There it is. There you are. I'll go there. So, economy, politics, and culture, all being interconnected to one. This is why you, I'm gonna go back to K-pop because I don't know any other cool groups out of, out of Korea, but you're having that group influence our culture. Uh, whereas, you know, in the 60s and 70s and 80s and, and, and earlier, we had our influence uh, on the world, our music, our things that we did. And now you're seeing some of these countries that were undeveloped that are, you know, Korea is very developed now, uh, influencing us. And so this interconnectedness. And so the ideas of uh, our identity as a nation is changes and who we are changes. And it's the combination of economics, politics, and culture. Um, again, this is why I uh, like this. And this is the other one. This is um, uh, the BRICS. And so the BRICS are quite a it's really important point right now. Um, so there's Brazil, China, Russia, uh, South uh, South Africa and a few other countries. The idea is that they're setting up an alternative trading block and a financial system. And so they're right now the United States dollar is the hegemonic currency. If you want to buy or sell anything, it has to go through the U.S. currency, which benefits the United States economy dramatically. Um, it also gives them tremendous power to influence politics, economics around the world. Mm -hmm. These groups like the BRICS uh, are setting up an alternative trading block to bypass the US dollar, which then gives them more power. Uh, China and Russia have recently set up a variety of agreements uh, where with the sanctions going on against Russia right now, Russia has said, if you want our oil and Europe depends on uh, Russian oil and gas, then you have to pay us in rubles. We're not taking American dollars anymore, which dramatically puts, uh, huge power into their hands uh, because Europe are, are complied because they don't have any natural gas or oil on their own, not enough to fuel their economy. And India has agreed to do the same thing. Uh, Saudi Arabia even agreed to do the same thing. So you've seen a dramatic shift in the economic order right now, which is a fantastic time to be alive unless you have a whole bunch of uh, American currency. Um, and that's where we're going to go on to that one. So I, I really like that video. It does a really good job in a short period of time to cover a lot. And then these two here, of course, I'm not going to go through them, but the, the expansion of globalization through time, they do a pretty good job at it. And they hit a pretty good pace. So there's a lot of information in there. So was there any questions about those two, those three videos that you wanted me to touch base upon a little more detail, anything you wanted me to clarify? Um, now, with this activity, again, this is your opinion. So let's look at it and see if we can find a couple of things that are positive, a couple of things that are negative, just to see if you're on the same page. So again, you had to highlight uh, positive, uh, certain color and, and negative, a certain color. So let's, let's look at this together. McDonald's may have be the most no notorious, famous name in the whole complex business of American culture going abroad. Again, this globalization of Certainly America, corporations have tremendous impact on the world. Think of media, Facebook, social, uh, Instagram, uh, et cetera, plus their food. If you go anywhere in Europe, you can go get a Starbucks or a McDonald's. Anyways, there are approximately 24,000 restaurants all over 115 countries. 
uh, new McDonald's somewhere in the world every six hours. Like Coke though, it's easy to denigrate, criticize as a symbol of the crass, unhealthy commercial side of American culture. American scholars, Benjamin has gone, um, gone even further, summing up everyone's fears of cultural homogenization in the same but oddly interesting Mick world. But McDonald's has actually been a remarkable sponsor of the local cultures. The Aryan, uh, the Air Iran, a popular chilled yogurt drink in Turkey, Malax, a grilled salmon sandwich in Norway, and various foods in around the world. For example, in Hong Kong, they have a lot of, because um, I've been to Hong Kong a few times. Uh, oh, what fruit is it? Anyways, they have unique products there for that country as well, that former country. Um, if you're a vegetarian, a strict Hindu, they're even better. There's only the Meklu Tiki Burger, a spicy vegetarian patty made of patios and peas, uh, and other things for local cultural um, needs. People call us multinational, like uh, I like to call us multi-local, commented the President CEO of McDonald's International. In other words, people forget that certain things came from and they don't um, care. American says chow and glitch, dance to salsa and eat it too, drink vodka and on and you don't think and make this Italian, Jewish, Hispanic, Russian or whatever. We adopt elements of myriad immigration cultures because they help us express ourselves better. I think it's the essence of culture and exchange, not adopting foreign things wholesale, but choosing them according to values and ideas of their own culture. So some positive things is my opinion, I'm going to go, uh, let's go follow the process, green. Uh, no, I don't want that. Um, some positive things is that they respond to the local culture. That's a positive thing. And you, you know, you, there's some different examples. Some negative things is <clears throat> they are, in a sense, symbol of that. Uh, in Italy, Rome, and in uh, Paris, France, it's McDonald's signs have to be very small. Uh, there's no big arch sign posted. Uh, it's just a tiny little sign. So they've tried to restrict, um, in a sense, the impact on their streetscape and the geography of their nation. But they haven't stopped it. What they've tried to do is try to, you know, here's your little shop, you can still have McDonald's. But the idea, again, some places, even in uh, Canmore, which is just west of town here, they restricted big box uh, restaurants in the town itself. They're along the highway, but not in the town. Reason being is they wanted to have small local, uh, local cultural things, local people, mom and pop starting a business. And if you're on the highway, well, you can get your fast food and keep going. And so other countries have done the same thing. So that they, they want to try and maintain their culture and identity and not be impacted in a negative way by a foreign culture and a McDonald's is an example of that. Um, does that make sense? So there's just two examples and there are other things in there. So if you got those two, there's a thumbs up. Does that make sense? Okay, it wasn't super complex. And there are more in there of positive things and negative things, but I'm just showing you two. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. Um, I don't need this. Uh, okay. I, uh... Okay. Has anybody been anywhere, found any different food anywhere in the world that they've gone to uh, in terms of McDonald's? I like that, the McCurry pan. I heard the rumors that they're gonna bring back McDonald's pizza. And uh, when was that? That was the 90s, I think. They had it. It was pretty good pizza, but I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Activity. Oh, got the chat. 
They had, yeah, exactly. Yeah, AC, they had pizza. I think in the 90s, I think it was. And uh, the, it was pretty good pizza. It wasn't super big. It was, you know, a small. Small was small. Um, but I think the challenge was they have a real requirement to have, by the time you order and by the time you get to the next window, your food's ready for you. And they're having issues where people were having to wait and, and those issues. And so they, I think they had, that was a problem for them. Or maybe there's just not a big seller. Okay. Activity two, let's go on to this one. Personal identity refers to who you are as a unique individual. There is no one else exactly like who, like you are anywhere on the earth. Although there's this concept of the doppelganger, you can look with that up, it's that you have an identical person next to you out there somewhere in the world of the billions. Share your screen. Am I not sharing? Oh, that's weird. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna share screen. Um, is that is that sharing? My goodness, I was working away there and you didn't even see it. Oh my goodness, please do speak up in the future. <laughs> If I didn't have that shared, I apologize. Um, so I only highlighted two sections. So if you didn't see that before, that's what I have highlighted. Just two sections and you can do more. Uh, wait, so anyways. Uh, if you didn't highlight it, those are fine. I'm just giving you an example. The idea is that you can find areas that are positive to you and negative to you. And again, it's your perspective. And this is why we look at multiple perspectives. What we want to understand is that you read it, you highlighted it, and then as you go forward, oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. Uh, that's fine. But it, the color doesn't matter. It, it, it's you'll be fine. I'm not. I'm not worried about the color. Um, I want to know that you highlight it, you read it, and you have an understanding of this positive and negatives, and life's good. This is not a big thing here. This is just an introduction to the concepts. So let's go on to activity two because you're going to have some class time to work on this. Uh, personal identity refers to who you are as a unique individual. There's no one else exactly like you, except there's a doppelganger. You can look at the facts. We are all expressed, uh, we're all express our identities in different ways and have different aspects of our identity. Now that you have learned about globalization, consider how your um, how your identity is influenced by globalization. Choose five of these characteristics. How many are you going to choose? Hopefully, in your mind, you just said five. Choose five. <clears throat> so let's do one together so we know what um, what it is and how we're doing it okay so choose an item i'm going to choose this one favorite material possession you get to then dictate what that is what is it i'm going to just for ease of use is my truck okay how is this linked to globalization so my truck is made in the United States from parts from Canada. And the, the windshield is from Germany. The electrical chips are from Taiwan. The tires are from, uh, I believe, Germany. The um, oil. Uh, the lubrication systems is from Canada. The, uh, the metal, the aluminum comes from, from Peru, I believe. So <clears throat> how is this connected? Uh, this is an example of how it's connected to globalization. And it's how is this character? Uh, and, and you know, my, my truck, you know, Albertans drive trucks, but I use it for any of things, help people move stuff. Uh, I use the back of the truck in the van all the time. Um, 
And of course, having in a truck in Alberta, that's sort of uh, apropos, you know, it's sort of a cliche. Um, so a personal identity is listed below. Record each character is choosing the table and have those characters linked to globalization. So this is how it's linked. It's made all over the parts from all over the world and shoved together. And this truck, of course, is a possession and I, I like it. And um, this is how it's an example of globalization. How is this characteristic of my identity truck um, connected to globalization? And let's say you're into skateboarding. You know, so you, the wheels are from this country, the wood's from this country, and the, uh, the tape on the top is from here. Uh, but also uh, I'm, I follow whatever famous skater somewhere, I'm sorry, I don't know the skating culture. Um, this person, I follow them on YouTube and Instagram. And I, I also, I've posted a couple of videos on how to do a kickflip, and I have, you know, 400 followers from around the world. That's an example of globalization and identity. Does that make sense? So you're going to choose five of these. I've done one, just an example, just to give you a reference point. And then you're going to go on and read page 21, 22 of the textbook. And you're going to answer this question. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I've sort of did that here as a link to globalization. So yeah, so again, my example of, let's say you, you're into this sport and you've recorded yourself and you've got a YouTube channel, and you follow someone on Instagram, um, these kind of things. However, you can think of anything outside of Canada and the connection to this product or this concept. Let's say that you spoke, speak another language at home uh, and that you have relatives in uh, the country your family came from, and that you use FaceTime and you practice that language. Let's say Tagalog and you have family in, in Philippines and you practice that language and you speak to your grandma and you like eating Filipino food here in, in Canada and you share that, um, that cultural aspect with your friends that are not Filipino uh, and they share theirs. So that's an example of globalization. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, so Gabriel, yeah, one and two today. So you, um, there's about a half hour left in class. So the idea is to finish activity two today. Tomorrow we'll, we have a couple of PowerPoints and we're gonna do activity three and four. So you can see how this works. We're gonna do a couple activities, some PowerPoints, class time. Does that sort of make sense to you? So again, uh, this is your opinion. So, and if you're stuck on finding something related to it, you know, just open up your uh, the, the chat and, and I will help you. Uh, yep, okay. Um, so we, this class ends at uh, 11.48. I'm gonna stay on here, but you in a sense have this activity to work on, activity two, which is this, fill in this chart, answer this question after you read these two pages. Does that make sense what you're gonna be doing now? And again, I'm just gonna turn my microphone off. Uh, but I'm, I'm here watching the screen and watching the chat. And if you do have questions or problems, I'm here to help. And tomorrow we've got a couple of PowerPoints, a couple of activities, and then we'll submit it together. And we'll, we, we do an awesome. Okay. Yeah, of course. And this is the benefit is if you wanna move on to activity three and activity four, this is the benefit of St. Anne's. You can finish that off. Um, I'm going at a certain pace the first day, just so that we're all comfortable and you know technical issues, but it is a little slower pace this first day, um, but that's okay. We wanna make sure everyone's up and ready in the course, understanding what's going on. And if you wanna move forward on the activity three and four, that's the benefit of working online. You can work ahead at your own pace. <clears throat> if you need a little more time, then I'm here to help. And if you are done this and you're doing something else on the side, well, then that's great. You can move that onto that on the side. Just uh, ultimately, we have a timeline for these things. Okay, I'm done chatting. 
Uh, if you do have questions, I'm staying on here and you can uh, message me, uh, chat within me, and I will assist as possible. Okay, thanks folks. So we're activity, we're doing activity two.